When the Apple Vision Pro was revealed in Apple's flagship event, it was called the most advanced, most immersive device Apple has ever built, and it was claimed that it would revolutionize the way we connect, share, and experience the world. So does Apple Vision Pro live up to these claims? I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of the first units available, and to be honest, this is something revolutionary. I somewhat had the exact same feeling when the iPhone was launched. Similarly, I believe that Apple Vision Pro will mark an era, but as of now, it's not as refined as someone spending $3,500 would want it to be. In this video, we'll talk about six key reasons why Vision Pro is not perfect yet. Roll the intro! The first thing that really stands out about Vision Pro is the price. $3,499 is a lot of money for most people. When you factor in taxes and some accessories, my total setup cost is over $4,000. I get that Apple is working with cutting edge technology here and the components aren't cheap, but I do think they need to find ways to bring the cost down in future models. This feels very similar to the early days of the iPhone, when the high prices made them inaccessible for many. However, Apple was eventually able to drive down manufacturing costs and release more budget-friendly options that helped iOS spread. I'm hopeful they'll follow a similar path with the Vision line and we'll see more affordable versions alongside the high-end flagships. But for now, be prepared to spend a premium if you want access to the Vision Pro ecosystem right away. It's really only practical for huge Apple fans, developers, and those with ample discretionary income. Even the cheaper connectivity accessories like the Vision Controller cost $149. So this is very much a luxury gadget at the moment, which limits the addressable market. Even though Vision Pro looks slim and sleek from the product shots, when you first pick it up, it's immediately apparent this thing has some heft. At just over 1.3 pounds, it's equivalent to carrying around an iPad Pro on your head. And that weight is always going to be more pronounced when it's pressed against your face versus holding a tablet in your hands. Apple did a great job distributing the weight evenly with the clever dual loop headband. This helps avoid too much pressure on your nose or cheeks, but after 45 minutes or an hour wearing it, I definitely start to feel a bit of strain. It's still comfortable enough for two to three hour usage sessions, but over longer periods, that weight does take a toll. I'd estimate Apple could shave 20 to 30% of the weight off in the next version with some material tweaks while keeping the same performance. Getting under one pound would make a noticeable difference in comfort. And I think they need to for Vision Pro to work as a versatile computing platform you'd want to use for XR work meetings or productivity. One of the coolest features of Vision Pro is how it can overlay digital objects onto real world environments with the cameras and pass through video. This blends physical and virtual so smoothly and lets you use apps while still interacting with your surroundings. Apple's promotions really play up this capability, even showing people wearing vision while having a conversation with another person in the room. And while the pass-through and blending work reasonably well, it's just not realistic yet. The video quality from the outward-facing cameras looks smooth and decently sharp, but it's nowhere close to matching the fidelity I see with my actual eyes. There's a subtle blurring and softening to the pass-through that keeps it from fully replicating reality. The camera sensors also struggle a bit in low light. Things get quite grainy and noisy as the lights drop. I assume Apple is doing some aggressive processing to remove noise, but this also has the side effect of removing fine detail. So while Vision Pro nails the spatial blending of real and digital objects, the video feed from the cameras still needs major improvements before it feels truly lifelike. I expect sensor quality and processing power to keep advancing dramatically, so the next-gen version should close this gap considerably. My next critique of Vision Pro is around the battery life. Apple quotes about three hours of continuous use on a full charge. In my testing, that claim definitely checks out. I've averaged around two and a half to three hours before needing to recharge. That's not terrible, but considering how amazing and immersive some of these Vision apps and games are, three hours goes by fast. Having to plug in the headset for charged sessions definitely limits the convenience and mobility right now. Thankfully, there is a quick disconnect charging cable, so you can have a wire trailing from your pocket without removing the whole unit. But still, for the price Apple is charging, 
I was hoping for longer legs from the internal battery or an easy way to hot swap external battery packs. It's likely they just couldn't fit a dramatically larger power source into this form factor yet. But improving battery tech to enable at least six to eight hours of untethered use seems like an obvious upgrade for generation two. The charging case is also quite bulky compared to what I expected based on Apple's ads and website photos. Yes, it provides extra backup power to recharge the headset up to two times, but it's almost as big as a mini handbag, so not tremendously portable. I think they have lots of room to shrink this down. I want to re-emphasize that overall, I'm a huge fan of the industrial design of Vision Pro. It really looks like some sort of futuristic cyberpunk artifact when you pick it up. The build quality oozes that trademark Apple polish. From the sleek aluminum alloy frame to the ultra soft silicone light blocking face gasket, the entire product just feels so dialed in and premium. But upon closer inspection, I noticed a few smaller design choices that seem like missed opportunities for refinement. It makes me think Apple had to rush certain aspects of it to launch on schedule. For example, the headband that holds the front visor section comes in this crisp white finish, but that piece fastens to the arms and frame with some rather bulky and shiny silver hinge joints. Up close, these joints look slightly cheap and out of place compared to the rest of the headset materials. I also mentioned that my hair gets quite messy after long vision pro sessions from rubbing on the headband and gasket. Apple doesn't include any type of cover in the box, which feels like an easy add-on purchase they're missing. And while I like the light, breathable fabric they chose for the gasket, it does pick up face oils and makeup residue quite noticeably during extended wear. Over weeks of use, it already looks dingier without an obvious way to remove it for cleaning. These are relatively small gripes, but fixing issues like these is what separates good from great when it comes to hardware design. So I hope Apple iterates to smooth out some of these rough edges. My last critique of Vision Pro's current shortcomings ties into the actual content and apps. At launch, Apple has a decent lineup of stuff in the Vision Store, including big titles like Final Cut Pro VR, Logic Vision, and Safari Immerse. Arcade also launched with enhanced games like Sonic Vision, Oceanhorn Metaverse, and Alto's Odyssey Ultra. But there are some massive holes in the ecosystem right now when it comes to media services and entertainment. None of the industry-leading streaming platforms like Netflix, Disney+, YouTube, or Twitch offer Vision Pro support yet, and other major developers like Meta and Snap have yet to launch ports of their social VR software either. Apple is clearly hoping the high sales projections for Vision Pro will convince these holdouts to come on board quickly, but the friction here definitely dampens the experience today. I can't easily watch Stranger Things or House of the Dragon in full spatial VR, or hang out with friends in Horizon Worlds or VR chat. The available titles are very impressive, but Vision Pro needs more of the top apps people spend hours per day on to really stick as a computing platform. The hardware has so much potential. I'm optimistic the content gap will be filled rapidly now that Vision is out in the wild. But not having some of this ready at launch feels like Apple prematurely pulling the trigger. I'd love to know what you think. Are you planning to buy a Vision Pro? What potential issues or concerns do you have based on the reviews so far? Let's discuss it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this in-depth look at Apple's new headset, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon for timely updates. See you soon.